Welcome to the Homeschool Together podcast. Where one working mom and a stay-at-home dad help you navigate the nuts and bolts of the growing and dynamic world of homeschooling. With a focus on early learners. Like me! All the ins and outs of building and maintaining your homeschool life. Homeschool! Find out tips and tricks to make things like this easier. I'm reading! And ultimately, enjoy educating your kids. And what's that last thing? Have fun together! Did I do good, Daddy? (laughs) Yeah, you did, sweetie. Good job. Hello and welcome back to Homeschool Together. I know everybody is still recovering from eating all that turkey a few days ago (laughs) and potentially, I'm going to see how bad of a person, you know, I can be. Uh, Michigan has won three straight the games. We'll see. Uh, We're recording this the day before Thanksgiving and so we are anticipating how much food we're going to eat. (laughs) And and the fact that I'll be hopefully celebrating Saturday. We will see. We will see. We'll see if we'll, we'll see if there's any Ohio State fans in our in our uh, in a listening audience, um, today we're talking about specifically distractions. Right, yes. tis the season. Tis the season. Tis the we, season for distracted homeschoolers. We, we, are, we are running the gauntlet right now. Uh, it's you know this is that time of year between the two holidays, and it's like after after Halloween, it's just like you're in the shoot, you know. Yeah. And so it's like oh, we're getting ready for Thanksgiving, and they're starting to do there's there's Thanksgiving parties, and there's stuff coming up. I had a show I had to put on, so we like we ram ourselves through towards we're, we're Thanksgiving. Swapping, we're swapping sports here in the next month. Right, yeah. our kids like had us put the Christmas tree up. It, on like Labor Day because they were insistent. I was like, okay, you know, so they're just, they got all into it. And I feel like this is just this grind that we get all the way till the end of the year. And this is the time when we have a really hard time getting quality homeschool from our kids. And I know that our kids are not the only ones out there having the same problem. I think it's probably hard for a lot of teachers in classrooms to get their kids to pay attention. It's it's a very tough month. I mean, I, I think getting into Thanksgiving is, is one, is one problem. Mm-hmm. But once you get through that, then you're like, oh, the holidays are coming. Oh, yeah. And it's three or four weeks from now. And, you know, you can really see the distraction. It's like every single day the holiday magazines are in. They're looking through those. Oh, my gosh. The kids and, are like ready to do Santa letters. And oh, it's, my gosh. it's, you know, and it, we have not had Thanksgiving yet, right? Our street is all Christmas lights. Um, yep. They all got turned on this week. So if we feel all this pressure and our kids feel this excitement and it's really hard to get good homeschool and we were thinking about like, different... hey let's sit down and do multiplication kids <laughs> yeah we we're thinking about what episodes to do we're like you know what the biggest problem we're dealing with other than complaining and whining stay tuned we'll do an episode on that at some point exactly um is just having really distracted kiddos and how do we still make this maybe it's not the most productive time of the year but how do we still be semi-productive through yeah, this time stay on task i mean i'm not going to give up five weeks of the year just to yeah. because there's a distraction you, you just can't and a lot of us homeschooling parents we, we know that and you know like we, we talk about the summer i mean if you give up the summer and you don't homeschool through the summer you can't afford to give up five weeks in the yeah in the thank goodness season. we homeschool year round yeah. i don't know what we do without that you know we have a little bit more freedom you know we have a lot we have family that we have to travel to mm-hmm. um we have multiple thanksgivings multiple holiday periods i mean oh it's my just gosh. It's, it's it's very very intensive for us and and so this next three weeks is really just kind of a window for me and and i know like, like you could see them they just walked by the door right now <laughs> and they are you know, very, very excited for what's coming. And it's very hard to like get them locked in and doing Mm -hmm. the educational stuff that we know we need to do, you know, on a daily basis. So, so we are going to break this up into two episodes, part one and a part two. I did a lot of research for myself or us because we're dealing with this. And I realized this was such a big topic Mm -hmm. that I thought we should break this up and really challenge ourselves. So this week, we're going to be talking about identifying and analyzing distractions. And then next week, we're going to talk about how to set up your environment and how to use technology and things to reduce distractions. So I think it's kind of nice to separate these two because this week, listen to this one. And there are so many things on this list as I was doing research. I was like, oh, gosh, yeah, I I feel seen. All these things, right? I was like, yes, that goes on in our household. That goes on. So take this week between this, this episode and the next and really try to identify and analyze the distractions in your home and then come back to us next week and we'll be talking about all of the the practical tips and things on how to to combat that and set up your environment um and you know modeling 
you know, being, not being less distracted, right? It's hard. It's hard. Our kids are distracted right now. I'm distracted. I'm getting like pinged on like Black Friday sales constantly. <laughs> I'm always looking at my phone. Um, it's hard to put our phones down. Well, and it so doesn't just, we're distracted too. It doesn't just end at the holidays either. I mean, you, you finish New Year's, you know, New Year's and it, it carries over there. I mean, there's a carryover effect for about a week or so yeah, and, and our kids are distracted for lots of different reasons oh, yeah. um, at different times of the year. And sometimes it's external and it's internal and there's lots going on. So take these two. And, and if you're listening to this later after this has already come out, then take, you know, listen to this one and take a little bit of time to really analyze and observe, and then listen to the next episode. Because I think, and that's what we're going to do this week, and I think it's going to give us some good insights into kind of where our, you know, key distractions are coming from. Because it just generally seems like, oh, we just didn't get anything done. The kids couldn't focus. And we just, you know, we spent all hours, you know, three hours at the table instead of the 40 minutes that I planned. And you just kind of throw your hands up. And I think if we can start really like kind of zeroing in on what's going on, um, then we have a better chance to fix it. Absolutely. Good preparation makes for good success. So Mm -hmm. let's, let's talk about the distractions. The first thing was when you approach them, you know, break them up into two categories this kind of external distractions, things Mm -hmm. that are impacting your child from the outside. And then this idea of internal distractions, things that are coming from within that may be distracting them from the things they need to achieve. Right. So your externals are going to be the uh, the baby or toddler that's making a bunch of noise. And so your older student can't focus or yeah. the clutter in the homeschool space so that they, you know, their eyes are drawn to other things or, or over a TV and the, overscheduled or things of that nature. Yeah. But even overscheduled, um, overscheduled might manifest when you're doing your homeschool as an internal thing because your kid is mm-hmm. really wound up about the things that are going to be happening later and excited about, uh, you know, all the things that are going on. Or maybe the internal stuff is, they have are having a lack of focus or a lack of energy. They've got a learning challenge. So there's really these two separate things and they involve, you know, very different approaches to solve them. So kind of in your head, think when you're looking at something like, is this external or is this internal? Mm-hmm. Because externals are things we can we can do a lot more about and internals take take a bit more effort, I think. And one of the things when we are looking at distractions, we can think of that as almost like the illness. And in order to find that as sort of like kind of through a symptom. So what is the impact? We see the impact. And then sometimes we have to essentially reverse engineer the impact and try to find out what is that root destruction. Right. You know, if you see your kids like eyes drifting off, you're like, okay, they're clearly distracted. But sometimes why? why are they distracted? Yeah. Sometimes you don't know that it's a distraction and that that's what's going on. So you're Mm -hmm. right. You can kind of look at these symptoms. So the first one would be that they have reduced concentration and focus. I think that's the kind of the general easy one to notice when their eyes are like going off into space as you're trying to talk. (laughs) Um, So really it's anything that's diverting their attention away from the learning task that you've got, um, reducing their concentration. So lack of focus. And and that means that they won't have a complete understanding of the concepts or the topics that you're teaching. And they can't use all their critical thinking skills because they're just not, they're not fully engaged. They're they're not even present. Like they're not there. Yeah. Yeah. We want to kind of, and, 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 and that is a symptom of many different problems, right? That could just be, I'm not interested in the subject today. Mm-hmm. I'm tired. I'm hungry. Like we know there's like a lot of reasons for, for that type of thing, but that is something that maybe the first thing we would all see. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Then like, and then the idea of like memorizing things, impaired memory. Right. And, and so the retention you, of like learning that they You thought given. they were paying attention. They yeah. were looking at you. They were nodding. And then later you ask them about it and they have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> How often does that happen to all of us? Where you're like, oh, you weren't paying attention to anything I was saying, yeah, they're right? Looking, they're looking right through you. That's right. So if you're noticing that, you know, you've covered something often enough and, you know, they, they seemed engaged, but they weren't. Time. Why are we still having trouble with time? <laughs> <laughs> so it really, when they're distracted, it really affects their ability to, to memorize and recall that info. Well, so yeah. that's a good, yeah. a good symptom to look I, for. I, I saw this acutely today with uh, one of my daughter's friends. I said, hey, we've got to go down the hall there to the left. And she's eight. And she says, which way's left? And I go, okay, I'm going to help solve this problem. What hand do you write with? And she goes, I don't know. And I'm looking at her like, are you kidding me? You don't know. She goes, uh, I don't know. I go, can you lift up the arm that you write with? And she goes, I don't know. <laughs> like, you're not even listening to me. She's so distracted, right? Right. Well, yeah. It's so yeah everything was busy. And, there was lots so of busy. people around. And I'm like, okay, let's pretend like you're writing your name. And she's like this. I go, okay, that's your right hand. Let's go to the left. The left <laughs> is the other one. And she's like, 
okay. I'm like, okay, the bathroom's right there. Just go to the bathroom right there. <laughs> you know? so like, I, I'm so distracted. I deal with this a lot with yeah. a Girl Scout troop where oh I've been talking with the brownies about, okay, guys, so we're going to do this. We talked, we're doing our senses badge. We're learning the five senses. So we talked yeah. all about different kinds of senses and we, we had a big discussion about it and we, we did the whole thing and we... We pointed to noses and ears and we talked about the different senses and how our senses are different. Then we took a trip to this local zoo where they had all kinds of reptiles and spiders and different stuff. And we wanted to talk about the senses in those animals. And I said, well, remember our senses? And they just looked at me like I had, they, like, I was like, you didn't get any of this. Like We talked about it in the last one, but you were so distracted by the other kids. We have a big multi-age troop running around that you didn't, you didn't actually take in any of this. Mm. So... I think when you, you ask them to recall, that's that's one of the symptoms. The other big symptom is that they're making a lot of errors. Mm -hmm. So you know you've covered something. You know that they know this material. You have this happen a ton with our daughter where yeah. she knows this math concept. You know she knows it. Yeah. And she's just making like tons of errors. And so it's like, well, it's not a memory problem because no. you've done this successfully before. You've I know you know it. You've done you know, like, for example, uh, subtraction of you know numbers into the thousands where some of the place values on the top will have will be less than the bottom so you need to do the borrowing and you know the classic mm -hmm. you know long form subtraction and which i'm no longer good at yeah, i tried to she, check her homework it yeah. didn't end well y'all uh, i am an engineer with almost a master's degree hilarious cannot do <laughs> hand long subtraction it was hilarious watching an eight-year-old go oh, mom <laughs> do you know what you're doing do you know how long it's been this since i've done like you know, subtractions in the thousands and stuff by hand. Oh Anyways, I felt schooled by it, my eight-year-old. It would have been funny if we gave you a double borrowing problem. But um, yeah. that, that being said, like, yeah, you're right. She's I'm like, literally, she has done a thousand, two thousand of these problems. And like, all of a sudden, she's just like, I don't know what this is. Numbers? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Could be letters. We, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like, and you're like, what are you talking about? Like, you know what you're doing. And you know, you do one and then she goes, oh yeah, now I know how to do this. Yeah. yeah, she'll say, oh, this is nine and she'll write a five. We're like, uh, you're, you know, you're that's eight. not right. Cause she's really not paying attention. She's, she's not really not attention. focusing. So that's a good, a good way to know too. Like, oh, okay. They're overlooking. They can make blatant mistakes. They can also overlook the details, you know, because they just don't have that kind of the, the level of focus needed to capture everything. Mm -hmm. And then there's like this kind of idea of like an extended learning time, like where, you know, things are taking longer than they should. and Right, because they're constantly trying to refocus. They oh, yeah. get distracted and they're constantly refocusing. Or well, you tell them something and go, do you understand that? And they're like, what? No. And then well, you got to explain it again. No, no, the worst is, is like, do you understand this? Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. I go, it's okay if you don't. Just tell me you don't. We can do another one. <gasps> no, I totally understand this. Like, okay, can you show me? I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah. And you're just like, oh my God, what are you doing? Well, and, and so sometimes you're like, is it because you're not listening? You're just, you're actively not listening. But I think that they're internally distracted, right? It was funny. I had this conversation with the kids the other day because in the theater, there's a, there's like a call and response system. So if I say it's 20 minutes to the top of the show, the entire cast and crew will say, thank you, 20, which tells me that they heard me and that they, one, they heard that I said anything, and two, that they know it's 20 minutes. So when I said the other day, I was like, we're going to go to bed in five minutes. The kids looked at me. I go, when are we going to bed? And they're like, huh? I said, you know what? In the theater, we you would say, thank you, five. And I, ta I taught my four-year-old how to be like, okay, it's going to be 10 minutes until playtime. She's like, thank you, 10. <laughs> it's like, great, because I'm checking that they're like, they're they're not distracted, that they're they're following and they're listening. So... It's kind of funny. Another thing that I see when in the distracted thing sometimes for me is, you know, I'll have been doing some ancient civilizations. We'll do some art. We'll do a little math. And then I'll start doing reading. And I'll realize, holy cow, we, we have not taken a break in like an hour and a half. I need to get this kid a break, right? We've mm -hmm. been sitting here. She's been so diligently working. I've been, you know, flipping between things. And that's been keeping it lively and exciting. But then all of a sudden I realize, oh, my gosh, we've been here for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, and having those kind of reminders to be like, hey, let's take a break, go do something physical, get out of here can also cause kind of this like extended learning time where you just accidentally you're taking an hour and a half and you haven't taken a break. And because we're going so long, all of a sudden there's like, you know, she starts having frustration or or she starts doing things wrong. And I'm like, well, what's going on? And all of a sudden I realize, oh, my gosh, we've been going for such a long time. Right. Yeah. At some yeah. point, you know, you can it's not like. 
necessarily the entire lesson is distracted yeah. or the entire lesson. Sometimes the entire lesson is focused, but sometimes it's like, oh, you got really good focus at the beginning and then you lost it somewhere yeah, through yeah. the middle. They got, yeah. they got that distraction. If you keep having this happen where they're not really getting the concepts and they're not retaining it, eventually it's going to snowball on you. And then you're going to get decreased academic performance. And this is a lot of times what will happen in schools because they don't see it right away. The teacher's not as close to the students, right? They've got, you know, 30 kids in their room, not as close as we are to our students. And they don't know that the kids didn't understand. They, you know, whatever the reason, distracted or they had a learning challenge or whatever, they didn't get it then and then it can get, get persists then all of a sudden they get way behind. And this is one of those areas where I think we're at a real advantage. It can feel very personally frustrating to us because... Yeah. In the moment, it can. In the moment, you're working like one-on-one or one-on-two with your students or whatever, and you're looking at them and you can tell that they're not paying attention and it's so, so frustrating. Whereas a teacher, as long as they're, you know, being quiet, they're looking at you relatively attentively, they're, they're just going to keep going. Yeah, it's on you. Yeah. Right? So in some ways, it's like... It's more frustrating to us, but it's actually really a good thing that we can see it when it happens because otherwise it could snowball and become a problem. Yeah, that, that kind of that negative impact on the on your academic performance is a is a big thing. I agree. Um, moving on to like just in general diminished motivation. Sometimes we can see our our learners just kind of grinding all the time that they just maybe are uninterested or you're something that they were interested in they're not interested in anymore or you just feel like the, the curriculum is slogging or something like that there's just like a general malaise that mm-hmm. where we have a, like a, a lack of motivation just on a day-to-day basis can be a, a symptom of like a whole number of problems right one of which could be that they were distracted and they they lost the thread of what they were they were you know learning and now it's challenging yeah certainly yeah that, that's that's something i've seen before right. too or like you're starting to get into material that might be a little bit more complex i've noticed this with the right start math uh version that we're in right now yeah d and uh it, it's more cumulative where the thing you're learning in the previous lessons matters now um, as opposed to doing the kind of the looping nature that they've been doing there we had like a run of like 10 or 15 lessons where every lesson kind of built on the previous one in some respect and then maybe it looped back into something a little bit different or not with some of the earlier curriculums, it was maybe only like a two or three lesson stretch where then all of a sudden they would loop into something different and then maybe they would come back to that concept. This one, I've been noticing like you, we need to keep it together for a while because they, they're they starting to take for granted things that you should know back here, like on 10 lessons ago, oh, we're starting to learn our multiplication, right? Um, and you're just learning, you know, what's eight times seven, right? You know, okay, mm-hmm. we're using the multiplication chart and whatnot and we're learning how to figure that out by breaking up maybe uh, seven times four plus seven times four because that's something i've memorized that's 28 plus 28 okay now we know it's 56 right instead of just memorizing seven times eight you got to kind of figure it out but then all of a sudden 10 10 lessons later the seven times eight is a sub piece of the thing that you're doing and so if you're, you're spending a lot of time still in a kludgy way figuring that out it takes the, the problem that you're doing and it makes it even larger. And all of a sudden now you're, you're lacking motivation because it not only is the problem taking longer to complete, but it's more challenging. And now I have a million steps inside my head in order mm-hmm. to do this. They just took for granted that, okay, maybe my learner hasn't learned what memorized and, and my learner has problems with this, like rote memorization is not a strong point of hers. And just memorizing what, you know, her times tables is, is a challenge for her. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I've been kind of dreading this because I knew this was coming, that this, you know, you, you need to memorize 12 times 12. It's 144 different multiplication. It's easier up on the top left of that table. It's a lot harder in the bottom right. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of challenging work there. And it's gonna, I'm going to need you to be able to do that quickly. And you start to lose motivation and she's, she kind of dragged here a little bit in the last like five or six lessons because it was more intensive and it was, I was asking a lot of her and then we've kind of reached the end point of this. Now we're going to go off on something else. But, um, yeah, I've seen that where the, the concepts begin to stack and if they're a little unsure of the base, it can make for a very unsteady pyramid and, and you can lose motivation there because all of a sudden they start to dread, okay, I don't really understand this. I struggled yesterday. Today's a little bit more of a struggle. We're not moving as fast as we we, were used to. And you can see the motivation begin to stretch and slip. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you see that motivation die, it can be, it can be because they just met something really challenging or yeah. something scary, or or it can be that they missed some concepts or weren't able to memorize way back when, and now it's it's finally it's catching up. It's catching up to them. Yeah, yeah. that's that's absolutely true. Um, another one is that you're seeing issues with their emotional well-being. So yeah, that's be like an internal problem, right? Yeah, there. But you're seeing kind of the outward manifestation, right? So they've got you know. Um, the distractions can can increase your stress and your anxiety. So they're trying to they're trying to learn or they're they're trying to get something done or achieve their goals. And you're noticing there's just an increased amount of stress and anxiety. And it's like, you know, that can come from a lot of sources too. A lot of these are symptoms that can have many causes, as with many like medical things, as you made that analogy earlier. Yeah. But this could be one of them. So if you're seeing that you've got some increases in that because, you know, maybe they're they're getting hard on themselves that they're not able to do it. I know our daughter is extremely hard on herself. Mm -hmm. Um, Whatever it is that's making her underachieve on the things that are important to her. uh, She's just, it's, she's really, she's really, really hard on herself. And it has been before because, well, you didn't pay attention when this thing was taught to you in your, you know, music class. And now you have to do performance and now you're all stressed out. Well, why are you stressed out that you went over this in class and then you find out, Oh, you didn't really pay attention to it. And that's why you're stressed. Yeah. Yeah, we're noticing that now that where she's having to kind of remember and keep on track on task, mm-hmm. you know, um, oh, did you fill out this sheet for this class that you're doing? Did you um, remember to do this lesson for your music, you know, lesson? And did you practice your basketball today and whatnot? And, and it's so many spinning plates and you can start to see like mm-hmm. things are slipping through. And then she gets a little frustrated when she realizes that, you know, on the day of before her sewing class or whatever yep. that she needed to do this thing and she just totally forgot about it it lapsed the whole week it was it's it's kind of funny like we were we're starting to get those kind of cliche experiences of like yeah just like parents oh, would with normal school oh mom did you know that tomorrow's a science experiment uh, a science fair and i haven't done anything it's like that type of thing right. is, is now beginning to happen to us a lot. Last night we were sewing yeah. a sock puppet because she's like, oh yeah, well the performance is tomorrow. We're having a sock puppet play. I'm like, and your sock puppet's not done. She goes, well, no, I have to make another one because I told everybody that I would. And then she's getting all frustrated and I had to help her with it. And then I went to school today for the sock puppet play. And guess what? It, it was not happen. sock puppet play day. Well, they I just they ended up were, showing up. Well, they thought they were. And then the best cast best best guess was maybe a rehearsal and that would be about it right but she didn't communicate that because she and i'm sure the teacher said in the last class we're not going to do the performance but both she and her best little friend in there neither of them paid attention because both of us came <laughs> for the for the you know, I, I was performance. there i was there because um i'm fulfilling my super dad of the year in washington <laughs> t-shirt that i got <laughs> <laughs> I'm always there. So this is a good one, you know, looking at their emotional well-being and trying to, you know, if you see some changes, thinking that maybe distractions are part of what's causing them some some impact. And the last one is that they're having an issue with critical thinking. So it's one thing for us to say, oh, uh, you know, do you remember what we talked about last time? Or did you memorize that? Or did you understand that concept? It's another to present them with a, a thought problem that, you know, you just want to think this through. Well, yeah. if we were in this situation, what are some ideas wh- how we could solve X, Y, Z and them just not being able to come up with it and getting very frustrated? That distraction could be a great reason for that, that they cannot focus enough to really think critically about they, something. They might be able to do the individual pieces, whatever piece of information or memorize that, you know, the dates and times and whatnot, but they can't put it all together. Yeah, yeah, that that's... ability to like analyze um, and you know draw conclusions is it can be very difficult. I think it's it's hard to analyze a problem under the best of circumstances. I know even as an adult, there will be times when I, I say like I've got to put a pin in this. I have to think about this later when it's quiet because I need some time to process this. Um, and and our kids need that process time too. And especially if they're distracted, it's like um, it's it can be really really tough for them. So that was a number of things that could impact and cause the distraction, you know, the, 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 impacts, the symptoms, the of, symptoms distraction. Of, of, of it. Now we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about like maybe how to identify and analyze those distractions, like what mm-hmm. they might be. So the first thing would be to kind of observe and kind of actively monitor the situation, whatever it might be. Right. During your learning sessions, you want to look at, you know, really take a critical eye to 
the environment that your child's yeah. in and the look on their face and their focus and the, the tools that they're using. You know, it's like that kid who's got a, a pencil that's just about to break. It's just, you know, the, the lead's like wobbling and you can see them trying to like focus on keeping it in. Like, you know, just really observe. Or right. they're playing with the loose tooth more than right. doing their math problems. It's like our, our kid loves to wear a hoodie and then, you know, play with the strings. <laughs> so just really kind of take a take a critical look at it. Oh, what do I have her sister doing right now? Is her sister on a tablet? Is is the tablet turned so that the other student can see that tablet? Yeah, right. Is are, is the volume up so loud that she can hear a little bit of it through the headphones, you know, or is she coloring? Is coloring too much of a distraction? You really want to take a kind of almost like an outside observer and take a critical eye at the situation. I, I know there's a lot of times I will be at the table and my youngest will be, I'll be doing something with her while my oldest is kind of doing whatever she's doing. And subconsciously, even in the peripheral vision, I can see when she's not working mm -hmm. or she's goofing around and I will just like tap on the paper and that'll be my, and like, how many times do I do that? And I just like unconsciously am telling her, keep working, keep doing your thing. Right. I'm working here. Keep working. Right. And when you're homeschooling multiple children, it's really yeah. tough, right? Because they do need to focus on something while you're helping another student. Yeah. So it's about actively monitoring, you know, for the signs of distraction. If you, if you see that they're frequently having shifts in attention, that they're restless, they're not engaged, their eyes are wandering, that kind of thing. And, and when is it happening? Like sometimes the distraction may not be happening all the time. It may be only happening, like you said, mm -hmm. you know, is it when you are working with another student, are they most distracted? Like that type of thing. Right. And we, we will notice our daughter could be just really on the ball, like really focused. Everything mm -hmm. is great. We get an Amazon delivery and the dog starts barking. We go, we quiet the dog. We get the package inside. We go right back to learning. It's over. Broken. It's over. Yep, it's done. So there'll be times we're like, okay, we're going to put the dog in the backyard before we start learning because <laughs> we know that there could be a delivery or something. We don't want any distraction. Um, so there's those kind of things that, you know, it's it's funny what can get your kid kind of like off the track and then how you try to get them back on, back on track. Yeah. And something you can do maybe even just on a scratch pad or, you know, if, if you can, you know, at the end of your whatever lessons you're doing at the end of the day, maybe think back on what happened but start to keep keep a log we're gonna do this you guys yeah i'm challenging you oh me i am challenging you, you to are, make a are, distraction log are you literally giving me homework i am i'm giving you homework because ah. you're gonna sit through the lessons i want to see i don't want to do homework dog ate my homework <laughs> i want to see what kind of distractions we come up with because i think if you actually write them down um it's one thing to to sit down and you start working with with your student and then it's like oh they're distracted Okay, yeah, but let's really look at this. What happened mm -hmm. to make them distracted? Was it, you know, sometimes we'll have our, you know, trying to look at like, oh, they didn't get enough sleep. They didn't have enough to eat, whatever. Like if you can log it, like how many times were they distracted and what did that look like? Was it restlessness? Was it, you know, just looking disengaged or not not having the memory of something we talked about last time, whatever it was. Yeah. I want to see like how often in, uh, you know, short 15 minute lessons are we dealing with the distractions? Yeah, that, I, I think it's going to be very eye-opening. And, and to be eye-opening, you know, I think the one thing is to be impartial because a lot of times the distractions can be you as the educator. You're not focused. You're looking at your phone while they're doing their math problems or you're up walking around and, you know, not paying attention. Like, it could also be you. Well, right. Yeah, I think you have well. to log, like, when did it happen? What was it? What was happening at that and moment? And what was happening at that moment? So you can start to look at patterns. This is a great way to think about maybe making, you know, regular routines for your family. Mm -hmm. This might be the way that you figure out like, oh, my kid's not a morning learner. They need to do after, it needs to be after lunch or gosh, the mornings that we take a walk first mm -hmm. or get them out of the house first and do something active before we start our lesson, look how many less distractions we had in this lesson. You could even just, if you don't want to take down too many, too much information, you could just do tick marks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how many times in each 15 minute block did I have to, did you have to tap on the paper and remind her to get back to her point. focus? Yeah. Um, because it might tell us some things, especially as our kids grow their, you know, their best times of day and, and the, the, you know, kind of the stars aligning the right, the right circumstances for them to learn best. They change too. Well, and, and that's part of the optimization process of being a homeschooler. I, I kind of am starting to see that homeschooling is more of an optimal homeschooling method. Like we, we've talked about how much time you put into it and whatnot. 
Now, we don't have to educate as long to get more out. Mm-hmm. Um, we have more free time. Assuming they keep on task. Assuming <laughs> they keep on task. Um, but but in that, this is another example of us. We're, we're trying to remove the distractions for what reason? So we can be more optimal in our education. We can be more um, effective and we can get more out of it. And we can maybe not, we're not trying to do the same amount, maybe we can do more in that time frame than mm-hmm. our, our in and be more accelerated in our education, whatever it might be. But to be more optimal, to have a more optimal situation, but to us as educators and parents, being able to put forward in front of them the most optimal learning method that meets their needs. Right. Um, I think that's always what we're striving for. Right. We'll always, never. We're never going to get to. That's the entitlement, right? Yeah. We're never going to get to per- perfect. Yeah. But it's that kind of goal that we can continuously improve. Behold think, perfection. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what. But I think that that's what we want to do. And I think that's one of the things that we're pretty passionate about with this podcast yeah, is right, that continuous yeah. improvement. That yeah. we want to continue to get better for our kids and and make this the best experience we can make it. I mean, you have to. It's a double-edged sword a little bit because you have to set yourself up for realistic goals and yep. know that every day is not perfect and all of that stuff. It's not it's not about beating yourself up about not having the perfect curriculum or the perfect lesson or whatever, but it's about just keeping in your mind that you, we want to continuously get better mm-hmm. for our kids. Yeah. Be that well-oiled machine. Um, another thing that we have, we've always talked about, is especially when they are not as uh, young, I mean, obviously kindergartners and whatnot, um, but once they get a little bit older, it's really nice to actually begin to get their input, have them Absolutely. be the feedback mechanism back into your learning as an as an educator. You know, what what are things that are bothering them? You know, in a moment where it's really distracted, take a deep breath and say, why are you distracted? Mm-hmm. Instead of saying, stop being distracted and do your work and start right. to create that confrontation, step back and say, hey, you know, tell me what's wrong because I can, I, that's something I've always told our oldest. Right. I'm like, you have to tell me what's wrong because I can fix it. I can fix 99% of these problems. Um, if you just tell me what's wrong, mm-hmm. I can change something up. Like we can move over here. We can do something different. We can, I can, I can lift the house for you. <laughs> you know, whatever you need, I can, I, I can do for you. You just have to communicate to me. And, right. and sometimes when we don't have those open lines of communication or if we're struggling, that can be difficult. It's really nice to kind of bring them in and have them give you some feedback because sometimes that might be the shortest way to stopping the distraction, which right. is them saying, oh, um, I have an itchy tag on my shirt and <laughs> yeah. it's bothering me. It can me. be very simple things. You guys. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And and sometimes if you, you know, you're not right in that place in the moment to ask, you can always kind of interrogate that afterwards. And sometimes I sit down with our daughter quietly later even that evening and say, oh, you know, daddy told me that, you know, homeschooling was kind of rough today. What was going on? You know, oh, I was really tired or I didn't feel well or, mm-hmm. you know, whatever it is, or it's really hard or I, I didn't remember this piece. You know, you can sometimes get a lot out of them later. Um, when, especially if the distraction ends up frustrating them too, then it's hard to really pull that info out. Yeah, exactly. Um, then beyond that, you know, getting their input, but also understanding how your learner learns and their learning styles and the things that they enjoy and the things that they need, um, taking that into consideration is super helpful. I mean, like kind of with my story earlier, you know, when you forget that like, Hey, things are going good and you're, you're working too long. Forgetting to take a break is a, you know, yeah. hey, my learner needs breaks every 40 minutes. And snacks. Snacks and things <laughs> they like that. Fuel, they're fueled on snacks. And, and maybe, you know, it could be as simple as putting reminders into your own phone that, you know, ping you or buzz you when it's like, oh, it's snack time. Oh, it's, you know, time to get outside and go do this thing. Or, you know, on your Kanban board, which we know you guys have all created, which Ariel and I have, and lots of great success. Maybe we'll do a little short bite on that or something like that. Um, you know, your board tells you what to do and you go, okay, well, let's take a break and let's get you to do your dance practice for 10 minutes. And it's a break for you. It's Mm -hmm. also a break for me. And then we'll come back in 10 minutes and we'll keep going. You know, putting those, um, using technology and we'll talk maybe more about that next week, um, but putting things in place to help you understand that and taking into account what your learner likes, what works best for them 
and what mm-hmm. can help move you forward. Yeah, I think it's it's a great point that you know you have to take into account how they learn best yeah. and you know what they need to be successful, whether that's wiggle breaks or uh, they need to get out in, in advance. Um, you know, we've we've talked a lot about that in the past, but we haven't talked about specifically in the nature of it causing distraction for our learners. So I think it's important to think about that too. Yeah, it's hard because you know a lot of times you know with, with you and I we we always talk about this how you know, steps and getting activity and being mobile and getting, you know, our fitness goals in place, you know, we're walking all the time and it's really hard for us. We talk about this sitting down for extended periods of time. Really hard. And sometimes I forget, like, I'll give an activity to my kids of some artwork that they need to work on and I will walk around the kitchen table reading the book to them. I'm doing that for myself because I know I can't sit that long, but like, I'm expecting my kids to do the exact same thing. It's crazy. Sometimes you like, you know, in our own minds, we just forget to think about, you know, what everybody else may need and whatnot. So it's, it's really, really important to give yourself a little bit of grace and understand like, okay, what is needed? You know, what, what style do they need? Just like you as an educator may need something or you as a parent may need something those kids may need something as well. So just to consider that as well. Right. And you're going to have to keep reassessing, especially the learning environment that you set up. We're going to talk a lot about learning environment in the next show, but this is one of those things that, you know, you may have a system that works great, but as your kids are growing and changing, that system may have to evolve. Exactly. (laughs) Right. It it now may be a source of distraction and an issue for them that it wasn't in the past. So, We've it's, definitely it's noticed point. things change. I mean, that I think that's kind of the hard part is that we, we do all this stuff, as she's talked about, to optimize, you know, really dial it in for our learners, and then they change all the time. <laughs> that's not fair. Why do they do that, Ariel? Yeah, why do so, these kids keep like, changing? Like, I just figured this out, I know. and now it's different. Um, so I think that's why that regular active monitoring is really important. And one of the things, too, that is a big distraction source is technology. Oof. We use technology to great advantage, but can also cause issues especially with with screens and some of we we have some kind of like lingering impact of screens with our kids that you know if they had screens in the morning they don't tend to be as focused as we need them to be later as if they had just gotten up in the morning and played so there's kind of some different things i I think screens tend to be a reward end of the day cool down as opposed to something in the morning. It we, works much better for us that way. Yeah, yeah it does. not so I'd say use technology wisely. There's times when technology can be great. And mm-hmm. our daughter loves doing like IXL and our younger daughter loves Khan Academy Kids. And there can be lots of great stuff with it, but it can also be a, a source of distraction. So I think when analyzing it, you have to really look at um, kind of that way the cost benefit Mm -hmm. of of that piece of technology like okay it's great they're doing fabulous at ixl and their reading is really accelerating but the moment that they do it i lose them for the rest of the of the lessons because they're so distracted so you may have to and we're going to talk a lot about some technology strategies on the next episode but keep keep technology really in mind because we're definitely not in any way an anti-technology family. We've got tons of tech and we think that it's great and it's very useful for lots of things, but you know, it can be kind of a double-edged sword. Yeah. There's just effects in, in using it wisely as opposed to, you know, generally applying technology everywhere and, you know, seeding the ground in some respect that the technology mm-hmm. is determining what is happening as opposed to you using the technology right. to your advantage. I agree with you on that. It's, it's just, I think it's a matter of, of thinking. And, and I think we're going to explore that in the next one, uh, next episode. Next one is considering health factors. Right. Is your kid super tired? Oh my God. <laughs> Did they not eat their breakfast for the third day in a row? Even though they said they would eat the sausage and Ariel, ego that you made them. <laughs> Ariel, why do, why do, why do we have two children who spawn from two sets of the same genetics And one of them hates breakfast. One of them hates dinner. And it's like, can we get you guys at least aligned? You know what I mean? Right. So that you wouldn't have to cook every meal. Yeah. 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 So this is, this is a big one. Uh, (laughs) Is your kid feeling tired, sick, hungry, Hungry. didn't get enough protein? We notice differences when our kids don't have enough protein with breakfast. So, you know, there's a lot of health factors to consider. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so this, I hope that this was helpful. Just give you an idea to kind of look at the distractions and identify them. And as we're talking about health things, I mean, we want to make it really clear that some of the things that you may see as symptoms or that may be distractions really have other underlying 
you know, it, it causes an issues that, you know, you may need to look at with your child's doctor. And this isn't, we're not talking about solutions for everything. We're talking about kind of that general run of the mill, you know, basic distractions, <laughs> kids yeah. that get distracted without another underlying cause. But if you see that this is happening all the time and it's happening to, you know, what, what you are considering an unreasonable level, then that's something that you definitely need to, to go you know, check out with your check child's out, yeah. doctor and kind of try to get to the bottom of because there may be something else going on that you need help with. Well, and it, may, it may help you inform on some type of therapy or different right. learning practices or yeah. different considerations you may have to account for. And it's not like it's the end of the world. It's just, oh, I just need a different set of tools in order to achieve the same job. And, right, exactly. And, and really just getting the right tools, I think, more than anything to solve the distractions. Because I think... You know, I we see the distractions with adults. I mean, one of my friends, he's constantly having issues with distractions. He has tried to get rid of his phone. He has tried to get rid of TVs and then get a get a dumb phone, as they call it, with like <laughs> a little old flip phone. But that didn't work, and so he had to go back to the other one. It's just there. People struggle with this, and whether oh, it's, it's something we struggle with as adults, a technolo- technological thing, but also like you know, just in general, like in our lives. It, I'm rarely on the computer, right? I mean, I, you, we laugh about it all the time. It's like, I rarely touch a computer, but mm-hmm. I have a phone, but I'm distracted all the time. And it's like not technology-based. It's like, I got to go here and I got to go do this. And I mean, some of it's technology-based. Some of it is. Let's be fair. I mean, I think we are, we are. It, it's difficult. One of the things that we can do really is try to model being present for our kids. Mm-hmm. That's the the biggest thing that I'm trying to take to heart is that, you know, when they see us kind of on our phones or whatever, while, you know, she's doing a math workbook and, you know, you're reading on your phone. Now you're, you might be reading a book, but she doesn't know that you're reading a book. Mm -hmm. And so that could look like, Oh, mom's just playing. Yeah. You're just playing. Mom doesn't care. And then that's right. Then that's distracting too. And it's really hard, um, with kind of as hyper online as we are as a society to leave the phones back and to really stay engaged. Well, I think it's also, you know, with the technology, I think it has to become an important piece of what we consider when we are talking about distractions and focus and whatnot, because it's not like it's going away. No, and it's, and it's, it's only growing, if anything. And it's not like it's going to get easier, right? Like every yeah. time there's the next thing, whatever the next thing is, whether it's Instagram, TikTok, whatever it might be, there's always going to be another thing. And that thing is going to become even more sophisticated and more complex and more good at what it's trying to do, which is distract you. And we have to just be aware of that and approach things in a, in a thoughtful manner with both ourselves and our children, whether it's technology or not technology, there's a lot of distractions out there. Um, we just have to think about what we're getting ourselves into and approach it in a thoughtful manner, I think is the best way to go. And, you know, not like we're going to always succeed, right? We're not mm-hmm. saying we're going to be the best, but if you're aware of it and if you're aware of the problems, because I think distractions is probably, I mean, outside of like some type of, of you know, disease or, or um, physiological thing, you know, when it comes to education, distractions is the biggest problem, one of the biggest well, problems. It's the biggest problem when it comes to working. I mean, yeah. how often are, you know, you're just, I, I mean, it, teaching. People knocking on the door at your cubicle and asking you a question. It's oh like, boom. I, I, I don't know like the exact thing, but it was like the minute you get interrupted, it's like a 15 minute loss. Whether, you, yeah. because you, yeah. then you got to get back into it. And I think the, it's the deep focus guys, um, the intentional work guys really, really talk, harp on this a lot um, about how important it is to learn how to do that deep, deep focus that spending time and getting getting really intentional work as opposed to being like doing 50,000 little things and I think it's kind of a, it's been proven that being a multitasker is not true being an efficient thing like you do need to have deep work and deep focus and trying to cultivate that is I think a, a big challenge for a lot of people I think it's a it's a real big challenge if we can figure out the distractions that are being introduced into our our homeschool and try to yeah deal with those and then as our kids get older teach them and try to give them the tools so that they yeah. can you know they can focus in college and at their their jobs and um, that they can give that focus when the focus is needed it almost um, feels like i think that that will be really good it almost feels like the distraction or get, like what you said giving them the tools to attack distraction is almost like um, it's almost like a critical thinking or a math skill or a reading oh, it's skill. Totally a skill it's just another skill that they need to have 
you know, should be one of the, you know, the panoply of skills that they need to, to have in their tool belt when they go off into the real world. Oh, I'm good at math and I'm good at STEM and I'm good at you know reading and social skills and all this thing. And it's like, I'm also good at handling distractions, right? <laughs> yeah. It's just like, I just, it feels like it's just another life skill that they need, you know, change the tire, be able to do some laundry, make a good, you know, three or four good meals and also learn how to handle distractions. Right? If, you, if like, you can focus, I think the other thing that's really great about it is that unlike, you know, our kids being in school all day and being mm-hmm. forced to kind of focus for that, you know, six or seven hours, whatever it is that they're there, they're asked to kind of give all of their attention all the time. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that we can do is we can build in lots of breaks. We can say, hey, just give me five good minutes. I need I need all of your attention right now. We're going to do this and then we'll do something else. And then you can give their brain a break. We're not asking them to just stay on all the time. And I think that that's, um, that's one of the things that I've noticed being a the the several different generations of workforce of folks that I work with. Yeah, we see this. It, yeah. yeah, some of the we folks, always talk about this. Some of the folks that are older, they have this ability to just focus for hours on end. I mean, not that they don't take some breaks, but they generally can just really stay deep into something. I just don't have that ability. Our brains need but, but more. But we joke about this because you it's, know we need to jump between things. We just have to. They might be focusing and doing something for a long period of time. But is it the most efficient way of doing something? Like, yeah, not not often has been my experience. And yeah, it, and I'm not saying it's a, it's a general thing, but some of the older workers we always we 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 joke about is is that you know they they're able to focus, and I I can't do that. I for, cannot focus that long for eight or I ten hours straight. It. But I can work just as fast as they can, if not faster. But I need more breaks. Right. Right. And so in the end, we probably get some stuff done at the same time because exactly, I have to take yeah. a ton of breaks. And this is one of the issues we've noticed when we get into meetings that have, you know, we'll get into these meetings that end up running to like two and a half, three hours. Yeah. And we have senior level folks who they are as engaged at hour three as they were at the beginning. And I don't know how they do it because by the time it got close to an hour, me and everybody else under 40 is like, we're like twitching. We can barely yeah. stay there and, and I cannot maintain my focus that long. So yeah. would someone make a decision? <laughs> and I and I and I don't I don't know I think it would be great. I, I would be really happy if we could our daughter could our daughters could leave our homeschooling experience with the ability to focus when they need to and then turn it off when they don't. Mm-hmm. Um, because right now I, I have a hard time even myself maintaining focus for that long. And, and I don't, I'm not sure what the difference is. I think that a lot of it's probably the fact that we have so much more technology than Mm -hmm. folks several generations before us didn't have. Um, we're used to getting information really quickly. We want to take it in quickly, make quick decisions. Um, and older generations don't do that in the same way. Um, and so I kind of wonder now, what will our kids generation be? Yeah. You know, our, if if I can barely handle an hour meeting, where are the, where are our daughters going to be at? Yeah. And how do we try to give them um, enough focus when they need it? It's like yeah. uh, whatever. It's like a it's like that nitro boost in the car, or whatever. <laughs> it has a limited amount of time, yeah. <laughs> but you can go really fast when it's on. How do we? You're, you're applying your fast and the furious knowledge. I'm, I'm trying. Yeah. Um, how do we? How do we like, give that to them so they can apply yeah. it when they need it? That's, I think, the going to be the real challenge um, yeah. of, of our homeschooling journey. Yep. So stay tuned. Next week, we're going to talk a lot more about building out a distraction-free environment, um, whether your homeschooling environment and you in the real world, and getting a lot more, I think, um, solutions to these problems. And we'll talk a lot more about that in part two, and that will come up next week. So we will see you guys later. Thanks so much for joining us today and making us a part of your homeschool journey. Please engage with us on social media. Join our Homeschool Together podcast group on Facebook and find us at Homeschool Together podcast on Instagram. We'd love to hear your feedback, questions, and recommendations. Until next time. Happy homeschooling!